problem 7a-4. We're going to complete a payroll register and calculate employer payroll taxes. Now, if this instructor tip doesn't pop up automatically for you, then you need to go to the question help and click on view instructor tip. Number one, if employee had no overtime, leave blank. In other words, notice here we have this column for overtime earnings. So for some reason, my accounting lab will mark you wrong if you put a zero in there for someone who does not have overtime. So if someone does not have overtime, don't put a zero, just leave it blank. Number two, cumulative earnings in this problem equals previous earnings plus gross pay. So when we get further along, I will show you that again. And same thing for this instructor tip number three and four. So those will come in handy later. So we'll close this for now. So the problem states you've gathered the following data from time cards and individual employee earnings records. Your tasks are as follows. On December 5th, we're going to prepare a payroll register for this biweekly payroll. So remember, a payroll register is just the pay data for one certain pay period, and it includes all the employees that were paid uh, during that pay period. In this case, we've got three, no, four employees, John, Nikki, Jeff, and Paul. And then we're going to calculate the employer taxes of OSTI, FICE, of OSTI Medicare, FUDA, and SUDA. So we're going to, this problem is unique in the fact that we're going to record the employee deductions and later the employer deductions. So here's our data. So the first thing we're going to start with is we need to fill in this column, previous earnings year to date. So that means cumulative earnings before this pay before this payroll so i'm just going to double click on 37200 paste it over here 48000 for nikki 64800 for jeff and 4600 for paul then we're going to add these up and i'm not going to bore you by watching me add these up looks like it's 100 54,600. Now, we need to fill in our regular earnings. Notice over here in the table it says biweekly salary. Because these people are salaried, that means they're not hourly. Since they're not hourly, they do not get overtime. So we're going to leave the overtime column blank. So we're just going to copy this data over. This is the gross pay for regular earnings for Paul doesn't get paid much. And then we're going to add these up and it looks like we get 6420. Now remember in the instructor tip, um, it reminds you do not enter a zero in the overtime. It even tells you here, leave any cells with a zero balance blank. Do not enter a zero. All right, so the gross, of course, is just regular plus overtime of zero. So we're just going to copy over their regular earnings as their gross. Because they're salaried, they do not get overtime pay. Now, notice this is important. It says taxable earnings. So this column. We're not calculating the tax yet. We're just going to calculate how much of the person's gross is taxable for first OSTI and then Medicare. And we know that OSTI has a wage base of 102000 So we're going to look over here, glance at the previous earnings year to date, and see if anyone take their previous earnings, add it to the regular earnings, will, be they, be, will they be over the $102,000 limit? And if you forgot what the limits are, they tell you right here. 
Austi, 6.2% on 102,000, etc. So we take 37,200 plus 1550. That gives us nowhere near the 102,000 limit. So all of John's gross is taxable for Austi. Nikki, we add these two together, 48,000 plus 2,000, it's 50,000. So she's well below the wage base, so everything's taxable. Same way with Jeff, and the same thing with Paul. So no one even came close to the $102,000 wage base for Austin. And Medicare, the problem, assumes that everything is taxable. Tells you right here, Medicare, 1.45% on all earnings. So we're just going to copy the gross over. Check our answer. Now we can move on. Click continue. And now we're on cumulative earnings. Cumulative earnings, if you remember my instructor tip, in this case, cumulative earnings, tip number two here, is the previous earnings and then this period's gross pay. So we're going to take, we'll start with John. We're going to take his 37,200, add his gross, 1550. And that gives cumulative earnings of $38,750. For John, or excuse me, Nikki, we're going to take $48,000 plus $2,000 gross gives us $50,000. For Jeff, it's $64,800 plus gross of $2,070 gives us $66,870. And then poor Paul, 4,600 plus 800 is 5,400. And then we're going to add those up. We get 161,020. If you want to make this easier to read, you can put in the commas. I normally don't recommend that because it's one more keystroke for you to make an error. And now we're working on the actual deductions. So how do we calculate OSTI? Well, if you forgot, it tells us 6.2% on anything below 102,000. So the way we're going to do this, we go back up here to the taxable earnings column. So we're going to take his taxable OSTI, 1550, multiply it by 6.2%. See if I can get the percentage sign to work this time. So 1550 gross times 6.2, hit the percent key, 96.1 deduction for John. Okay, now what I was doing wrong in a previous problem, I could not get the percentage sign to work for me. I was not clearing it correctly. Now, Nikki, we're going to go back to Nikki's taxable gross, 2,000, times 6.1%. Excuse me, 6.2% gives us $124. Scroll down, we got Jeff. Jeff has taxable Austi of 2070. Wonder if I cleared it. Times 6.2%. Nope, I didn't clear it. So that's why I'm getting this crazy large number. So the number is 2070 gross times 6.2%, 128.34, thanks to the student who was pointing out what I was doing wrong on the percentage sign on these calculators. And then we've got Paul, poor Paul, we got 800 bucks, I clear it, 800 times 6.2% gives us $49.60. We add those up, we get 398.04. 
Now with Medicare, we're going to take the gross, taxable gross for Medicare, which is all of it, and multiply it by 1.45%. And if you forgot that, again, it's in this box that tells you Medicare 1.45%. So for John, we're going to scroll up and get John's taxable Medicare 1550. Times 1.45%. Oh, I didn't clear it. That's why. So if you get a huge number that does not look realistic, it's probably because you're a dummy like me and you forget to clear. So we've got 1550 times. 1.45%. So we have to round that. So that's 22.48. Clear it. So for Nikki, we got 2000 times 1.45%. $29 even. Clear it. We've got 2070, which I got from here for Jeff times 1.45%, $30.02. Got around that properly, 30.02. And then we've got, got to clear it, 800 times 1.45%, $11.60 for poor Paul. Add those up, we get $93.10. Fit. Now, we don't need the calculator for fit, but we do need these allowances. So we also need our fit table. So our first person is John. John's pay, which we can also get from up here, so we don't have to scroll up. $15.50 with three allowances. 15.50, so three allowances is the far right column. 15.50, looks like is this call or this row. So it's 140, copy and paste this, 142 for John. And then we've got Nikki. Nikki makes 2,000 and she's got one. Allowance, 2,000. So this must be a zero allowance. This must be the one allowance, 308. So scroll up, just make sure that column is the one. Yep. Paste that. Jeff, his is 2070 gross pay with two allowances. 2070. So it's this row. And I think I said two allowances. Yep. So this is zero allowances, one allowance. So it looks like 290. And then poor Paul, 800. He's on the first row. See how many allowances he has? One. So we're going to take 71. Add those up, we get 811. We no longer need the fit table. So sit. Let's see what this state charges for state income tax. 5% of gross pay. So I get to use my percentage key again on my calculator. So we're going to take the Gross, 1550 times, and I already forgot the, the rate, 5%. Don't get old and forgetful like me. Times 5%, 77.5. And then we've got, let me clear this. We've got 2,000 for Nikki times 5%, 100 bucks. And then we've got 2070 for Jeff. Got to clear it. 2070 times 5% gives us 103.5. I just put it in the wrong field. 
So the previous person was 100. Now we got Paul, 800, clear it, 800 times 5% gives me 40. We're going to add those up. We get what? 321 even. Union dues. This sounds like it's going to be easy. Wrong table. Union dues, $12 biweekly. Twelve, hit my down arrow, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 times 4 is 48. Now we got to do net pay. This is the most tedious part, in my opinion. So, to calculate gross pay, you're going to take their, excuse me, to calculate net pay, you're going to take their gross pay and minus all these, notice here's our deductions. You have to subtract the 96.1, 22.48, 142, 77.5, 12. And you might even want to put these in Excel if you know how to use Excel and have it do the math for you. You just have to plug in the numbers. So fortunately, I've got the answers here. So net pay is 1199.92, You add up the net pay, 4748.86. I sure hope I'm typing these in correctly. And now we're getting to the distribution of expense accounts. So remember from the slides I showed you, all we're doing here is we're going to place the gross pay, not the net pay. No one cares about the net pay except for the employee. We're going to take the gross pay because these two columns, we're going to use this for budgeting purposes. So whoever's in charge of the factory, the the gross pay of those employees that work in the factory are going to go against their budget. So we'll put them here. And for the people that work in the office, we'll put their gross pay here. So now we need our we need to find out who works where. So for some reason they call the factory production. Notice here's our department. I'm looking over here in the table. Here's our department. And there's production. I don't know why they just didn't label it factory. Why not keep it the same? So if you're confused, just do the office people first. So we got 2,000. Nikki, we're going to take her gross and put it under the office. She's an office worker, apparently. We've got Paul. His whopping $800 also goes towards the office budget. So that's $2,800. And that means the production people must be the same as this factory. So John works in the factory. Put his gross in the column. Same with Jeff. And then we're going to add up 1550 plus 2070 gives us 3620. The total sit. So I screwed up the sit. Oh, yes, I did. This should be 321. Okay. Hopefully you caught that. Now, this is a little more challenging. Now we're going to calculate the employer taxes for OSTI, Medicare, FUTA, and SUTA. Let's go back to my instructor tip. The last instructor tip says the employer portion of FICA is calculated on total taxable earnings, not on each employee individually. In other words, don't go up to the employee. Let me find the employee deductions. Don't go up to the employees and just assume it's going to be the same exact as these. In other words, you can't assume it's going to be 398.04 exactly. Same with the 9310. So what we have to do to calculate FICA OSTES, we have to find the total taxable. Notice it says in my instructor tip, employer portion of FICA is calculated on the total taxable earnings. So what is the total taxable earnings for OSTE? Notice up here it says total taxable earnings for OSTE, 6420. So we're going to take 6420 times 6.2%, and it should be close, 
if not exactly the same as this number. And it was. So OSTI is exactly the same. And then for to calculate the employer portion of Medicare, we're going to take the 6420 from here. So we need to clear this 6420 times 1.45% gives us something close, but not exactly the same as the employee portion. So I'm going to take the 93.09 and put it under here for the employer portion. Okay. And then for the last and trickiest part. So remember, the instructor tip said that, well, this FUDA and SUDA is also calculated on the total taxable. So here's where my accounting lab or the authors did not do their job. We have taxable earnings for the two FICA taxes, but we should also have a taxable earnings column for FUDA SUTA. Why? Because FUDA and SUTA has a wage base. The wage base is $7,000. So we can only calculate the tax on each employee's first $7,000 per year. Okay. So let's go look at their er previous earnings. Let's start with John. His previous earnings prior to this paycheck, 37000 he's way over. So none of his gross, none of his 1550 is taxable for FUDA or SUDA. Nikki, her 48000 was already, or I should say her previous earnings was 48000 So she's also well over the 7000 limit. Let's look up Jeff. He's way over the 7000 limit. So none of his 2070 gross is taxable. And then we get to poor Jeff. Jeff is under the limit of 4000 But we have to double check. Make sure you take his 4600 add it to his gross pay of 800 to make sure he's still not over 7000 He's not. So the, the amount of... Paul's gross wages, $800, that's taxable, is the full $800. So the only thing that's taxable for FUDA and SUDA out of all these employees' salaries is Paul's $800. So now that we've calculated how much is taxable, we can calculate the tax. And I've written it out here. So remember, we for FUTA, we found out that only $800, so this $800 right here, is the taxable portion. And what is the rate for FUTA? Well, we're gonna assume that they paid their SUTA on time, so that's why we're multiplying by 0 .008. And if you forgot where we get that from, oops, it's right here. FUTA rate is 0.8%, also known as 0 .008 as a decimal on earnings below 7,000. So just to show you how we got that, I'm gonna clear this. I'm gonna say $800 taxable times 0.8, hit the percent, and that gives us that $6.40 that is in the screenshot. So that's how we calculated this $6.40. $800 taxable. And SUDA also has the same wage base, according to this up here. So it also has seven hundred, or excuse me, eight hundred dollars taxable. And then we're going to multiply that by the five point four percent. So clear this. We get eight hundred times five point four percent, forty three dollars and twenty cents. So that's how we got this 43.20. So here's the calculations if you forgot how the employer's t payroll taxes are calculated. Then we add them up and we get 540.73. And then you hope and pray that everything is correct. Fantastic. So this problem would have been much easier if this payroll register had taxable earnings column for FUTA and SUTA. 
So this is a deficient payroll register. They did not do this payroll register correctly. And that's it.